It's so number 81 in section 5-7. Oh yeah, like all right. So the first thing with any of these in section five seven is identifying what kind of sequence it is. If you know what kind of sequence it is, you know what formulas you can use. All right, there's two formulas for each. There's a A sub n formula and there's an S sub n formula for arithmetic and geometric. Cool. Um, so this one says, if your salary were to increase at a rate of 6% per year, find your salary. Uh, so I love this problem because there's some algebra hidden in it. So if I'm making uh, X, well, let's see, do they tell me what? It, original salary is 31000 Okay, so $31,000. I'm making $31,000. How much do I find out? How do I, how do I find out how much I'm making the next year if it increases by 6% per year? Beautiful. I don't just multiply this by 6%, right? That would be evil. What a raise. Now you're making 6% of what you did. You're going to add that back on top of this, right? Now, here's the little bit of algebra. If I take the 31,000 out, and some of you guys look at it this way to begin with, to get a 6% increase, you multiply by 1.06. If I'm going to increase you by 6%, you right now have 100%. If I increase you by 6%, that's 106%. Think about it. Just like if I were to decrease you, you can multiply by 94%, because now you're 6% less than what you were. So this is actually multiplied by 1.06. So you make 31,000 the first year, and then the next year you're going to make that, and then the next year you're going to make 31,000 times 1.06 squared. You're going to multiply that by 1.06 again. So what kind of C you guys kind of with me here? No. Wherever I currently am, how do I raise it by 6%? I multiply it by 1.06. Does that by itself make sense? Not to all of us, okay. Uh, so to raise this by 6%, wouldn't I add 6% of it to itself? Is that cool? So to, uh, if a shirt costs $10 and I mark it up by 6%, how do I figure out what the new price is going to be? You would take... 6% of this and add it to itself, right? All right, always. So you would take 6% of whatever the hell it is, because what was 10? It was a number I made up. So whatever the actual number is, you take 6% of it and add it to itself. What's another way to write that? What's one whole x plus 0.06x? 1.06x. So how do you increase something quickly by 6%? You multiply it by 1.06. How are we doing so far? All right, some of you guys know this, because when you have to do that algebra problem, you just go straight to that step and say 1.06x and solve. Divide by 1.06, yay. All right, that's algebra. So now, if I am here, whatever this is, how do I find out what 6% increase of it would be? I multiply it by 1.06. How would I write that? What's 31,000 times 1.06 times 1.06? And then the next year is going to be 31,001.06. Cute. I like it. Maybe. You guys, you guys are really, I'm, not, I'm serious. Look into poker. Look into it. <laughs> Study it. None of you need eyeglasses. None of you need like the fossil glasses and all stuff. You don't need the hoodie. No, you're set. You got that. Let's see, I can do it. See, right there. See, that's a tell. Yeah. So the next one is cube. How far we go? You got, all you're doing right now is figuring out what kind of sequence it is, and then I know how to attack it. So what kind of sequence is it? What do I keep doing from one to the next to the next? What do I keep doing? What operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. So is it arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. Geometric. Because arithmetic, A, stands for addition. Geometric, G, that must be the other one. <laughs> I don't know, just make that up. G sucks. It's a silent G in front of multiplication. Uh, so what is R? What's R? What do I keep multiplying by? 1.06. And what's A1? 31,000. That was my original salary. And they ask you, 
What do they ask you? Find your salary during your 15th year. So this is the first year. This is the second year. See how that's a one? This is the third year. See how that's a two? So that actually is exactly like the formula. The formula is a sub n is a one times r to the n minus one. Right? Why the hell is it n minus one? Why? Why? Exactly. Started at one. So how do you get to one? I'm there. You don't take one step to get to one. You're at one. Shit. So that's why it's kind of like offset. So do you need to take n steps to get to the nth place? No, you only have to take n minus 1 steps because you started at the first freaking step. I don't know if you guys are with me. That's why it's an n minus 1 in the formula. And you can see it. The first year, how many 1.06s did you have here? Zero. How many 1.06s in the second year? One. So it's always one less than the year you want. So that matches up with the formula. It's n minus 1. So now that I know what a1 is and I know what r is and I know what n is, 15 years, I'll just plug them in and see what it is. But the whole problem is hard. And to, the, whole, the hard part is what kind of sequence is it? And what is A1 and what is R? Once you figure out it's geometric. But you really got to just sit down and say, what would it be the next year? What would it be the next year after that? And I like the question. You're like, how far do I have to go? Hopefully not far at all. That's the whole point of having formulas so that I don't have to do that forever. Maybe. I can't remember. Did I give you guys the problem with the guy folding this, the sword of making the folds on the sword? Number eight. Did I, I don't think I signed that one this time. It's too bad for me. I like that problem. Folding the sword, folding the metal over and folding it over. No? Okay. Like, whatever, Jeff, man. I always think about Kill Bill whenever I see that problem. Or if you've never seen Kill Bill, I mean, do it. Um... All right. Anything else in homework? Yes. In the same section? Yeah. Okay. So this is a pendulum. Each swing of a pendulum is three inches shorter than the preceding swing. The first swing is eight feet. So we're all ready. Before we do anything, you should know what kind of sequence this is. And to start us off, do you guys realize that there is no subtraction? Right? There is no spoon. No? Okay. I'll let it go. Uh, subtraction is just adding the opposite, right? Subtraction is adding the inverse. There is no division. There's multiplying by the reciprocal, right? Well, that's why the hell did I say that? Because I'm going to keep subtracting three. But there is no subtraction. There's adding a negative. So what kind of sequence is this then? Yeah. Arithmetic. This is based on addition, right? I'm not going to multiply by three. This pendulum is like eight, 24. Oh, my God. You ever seen that pit in the pendulum, the poor dude? Oh, man, i got to figure. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> that was a quick story. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'll stop. No, I'll stop. It's going to happen more. Uh... So what is A1? This, that should be the easy question. What's A1? Eight. eight. Why is it eight? Because the first swing right. is inches eight. To convert it into inches. Oh, you could, uh, why, inches, uh, you could, sure. Yeah, so A1 is eight feet. Why is, inch, why is converting it to inches good? Because it's three inches less every time. I like it. So what would it be in inches? 96. 96, I like it. I didn't know where you're coming from, but okay, good. So it's 8 feet is A1. The units would be better in inches, I agree. I don't want to make like one-fourth of a foot for the three. Screw that. I'm going to just make it inches. All right. And what's D? Since we know it's arithmetic, it's got to be the D, the difference. Negative, negative 3. Negative 3. Kick ass. It's negative because it's decreasing every time. All right. Uh, and, of course, this, is, uh, this pendulum must really be, have a lot of friction on it because normally a pendulum will swing pretty well for a long time. There's a big pendulum in one of the museums somewhere, I can't remember. And it can't actually has to do with the rotation of the earth, and it keeps time. Have you ever seen that? It'll knock over a pillar when it's that time, and it keeps going. It'll knock over another pillar. Okay. 
knock the guy over that's in there cleaning that forgot I was going. Um, all right. So now then I know it's arithmetic. I know that this is true. Uh, what do you got, Jeff? You don't have to memorize that. You have it on your formula sheet, but I know that's true. I start somewhere and I add so many steps. All right, and it asks me, find the length of the 12th swing. So now you just got to plug and chug. I know what A1 is, I know what D is, and I know N is 12. Is that, is that cool? I mean, so it's all about if you can identify what kind of sequence it is, then you know what formula to use. If you know what formula to use, you know what you got to figure out. In this case, A1 and D. In the other case, A1 and R. Maybe. Maybe not. Right. Nobody's beat me up yet, but some of you guys look like you really want to. I'm not, it's not that evil. I don't know why you want to hurt me. Um, now, part B is more interesting. Part B says determine. So part A... It just says the 12 swings, so that's going to be n is 12, and just plug and chug. Plug and chug, I mean, blah, blah, blah. Plug it all in there and see what happens. Part B says, what's the total distance traveled? So what are you going to do? This, this gets a little interesting. So every swing, so each swing, so you don't have to worry about, like, this is not a swing. This is a swing. And then it's three less, and then it's three less, and then it's three less, and then it's three less. So how do I figure out the total distance? I've got to take this distance. Beautiful. Exactly. And that would just be S12, and you know SN, you know that formula. Or you can look it up. That was the one, the, the, uh, the urban legend, right? The urban myth of math that would make for a very boring movie. I don't know if you ever saw the other one. It wasn't that much better, but it was something. Uh, blah, blah. A1 plus A. That guy that repeated sums as you step in that idea. Come on, guys. All right. So, so now would you still have to convert Yeah, once you do it here, you can carry the inches through the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yes, ma'am. Thing under N. It's a two. Oh. Yeah. But you can look it up. That might be a better idea. All right. Because remember, it's all about how many pairs, and each pair is going to have the same sum as the first and the last because we're stepping in. So the idea of the formula is really easy to see in the formula. That doesn't always happen in math. How are we doing? So. As always, the problems with more words in them are the harder problems because you really have to figure out what situation you're in and what do the numbers that they give you mean and are you in the right units everywhere. All right, anything else from homework? All right, so to finish out chapter five, uh, I almost feel bad that we're not going to do much more with Section 5A except a quick run-through. But I just want you to know it exists. Because there are people who have studied this sequence for most of their lives. right? Uh, and I know you guys are like, who would be this person studying a list of numbers? Is this what every math person does? The people that aren't in math don't know what we do. I think you guys think I'd sit around all day, 2x equals 7. X will serve number two. This is what I do all day. No, this is not what I do all day. Um, but we already talked about the Fibonacci sequence a little bit. Who remembers the basic idea behind it? Fibonacci. Fibonacci. Sequence, not the man. We'll talk about the man maybe a little bit. Does anybody remember the idea behind it? I'll start us off. Two, three, five. Good. So the next one. And this is our first, uh, let's go out a little bit further. 13, 21, 30, 4, 55, 8, 9. Last point. Going 8, and nine. there it is. And something really interesting about the Fibonacci numbers, if you want to convert from miles to kilometers, for example, uh, if you had 8 miles, it's roughly 13 kilometers. And we'll see why that's true here in a minute. 
So, but for right now, do this for me, just to get us started. Uh, what's 21 divided by 13? And then 34 divided by 21? And then 55 divided by 34? You see what I'm doing? Just dividing one by the one before it? So this is not geometric. I don't keep multiplying by the same thing to get to the next one, right? You guys agree with me there, right? But it's still interesting that the further I go out in the sequence, the more geometric it becomes, believe it or not. So, so help me out. Who's got 21 divided by 13? Who's got that? Anybody? Do it again. 1.61. Five, yeah. and what's thirty-four divided by twenty-one? One point six one nine. One point six one nine, roughly, and then fifty-five divided by thirty-four. One point six one seven. One point six one seven. So if you kept going, and I'm not going to make you, I think we can maybe start to understand this is going to happen. The what we call the limit. If I kept going forever until I went insane, and then a little further. Uh, this ratio of one term to the one before, let me write that and see if everybody understands that. Because which, which term element is this? A1, right? So it's A1, this is A2, A3, A4, A5. So I took uh, A5, 6, 7, 8. I took A8 divided by A7. A9 divided by A8 and so forth, right? So I took whatever this one is divided by the one before it. Does that notation make sense? Whatever sequence elements this is, this one on top is going to be one further. That ratio, let me just put the limit. The limit of that as n gets really big, if I keep going out, is about 1.618, roughly. And of course it's not exactly one. It's like me saying pi is 3.14. That's not true, because pi goes forever. So there's this number, and this number is called phi. Or phi, but not pho or phi. Sorry. So this is kind of weird. So anytime we come up against a number that just comes out of nowhere, like pi came out of nowhere to ancient civilizations, and they had their own approximation for what pi was. Why was pi so weird? Because no matter how big a circle was or how small it was, if I took the circumference divided by the diameter, I kept getting the same damn number. Bam. Right? <laughs> And that freaked people out. It wasn't just because they had nothing to do. It's because there were always mathematicians, and they were curious about such things. And they're like, why the hell would that be? Why would this big-ass circle have the same ratio as a small appetizer? So they gave it the letter pi, because it was interesting. right? And the number never stopped. So screw that number. Let me just call it pi and make it easy to write. And now, how many guys know this? So there's pi. How many guys know the number e? So many guys like, no, Jeff, that's the letter. Anybody know e? Related to natural log, is there ever like LN. Second? LN. LN, related to natural log, exactly. It's, it's, it models population growth. E to the 0.02x would model the population growth in the United States, for example. I think we're a little below 2% population growth, but oh, somewhere on there. Anyway, E was a weird number. E is actually the number that, if you had this graph, E is how far you'd have to go until this area is one. Did you have to know anything what I just said? No, but just to let you know, it came from somewhere. It came from somewhere that freaked people out. And some other places it came from, and that really made people freak out. That's the same number we just got over there, what the hell? So we gave it the letter E, because we picked the ball out of the box, and it was the E. No, there's more to it, but don't. Um, all right, so this, this letter is what we call this, very often call this the golden ratio. Because, of course, civilizations like the Egyptians would think that this came from God. And what's really interesting about their pyramids, we see this ratio show up in the ratios of dimensions of their pyramids. Now, let's talk about why. Did they know the math, maybe? And they just made it work out that way? I don't know. I wasn't around, thankfully, or else I probably would have been dragging boulders. Right? Um, let me see. So, let's talk a little bit about 
this golden ratio. And uh, let me think, I'm trying to think about which way to go. Here we go, let's do this. If I have a line, and I cut it, if you want a nice visual, if you have your book with you, this is the bottom of page 279. If I cut it so that this length, if that ratio was the same as this ratio, good, I'm on the right track. And it actually comes out to be 1.618 if you do that. If you put this number C, if you put this position C so that this ratio is the same as, so the ratio of this length to this length is the same as the ratio of this length to that length. Let me let you soak in. Now that is getting less interesting, I understand. This is getting a little more geometrical and mathematical, I understand. But this is really part of the fundamental idea of the golden ratio. If you do that, if you cut it that way, then the, if you make these ratios the same, they must be the golden ratio. It's really freaky. So another place this comes out, and let me just do this. I, I feel like I need to show you this right now before you guys turn me off too much. Let me, let me try this. I've got several examples. That's why I was playing on the computer. But let me, uh, let me take somebody's suggestion. Almost anything you can use the Fibonacci sequence with. So somebody give me an interest you have. It could be sewing, it could be reading, it could be uh, planets, orbits, it could be uh, volcanoes, I don't know. Music. Give me something, music, all right, that's crazy because Fibonacci, of course, eats music up. I just love it. Uh, oh, there I went. Google, I left you behind. So a real quick thing about music. I love that you can't product music. Uh, the sequence, do you guys have, how many guys have an alarm that gets you up in the morning? Anybody have an alarm? Me too. Uh, and and the, do you have music that comes on or do you have a eh, eh, eh. anybody have an eh, eh? Yes, okay. That sound, is it pleasing? Yeah, they're nine. Well, that sound is not pleasing. So that sound is made up of frequencies of sound whose ratios are nowhere near the golden ratio. Whereas sound that's pleasing to our ear, here's the key thing about the Fibonacci sequence. Sounds that are pleasing to our ear. Any musicians in here? You musician? Major sixth, if I say that to you. Yeah. What is that? It's the interval between the one and the six. And it's actually, it's composed of, and I'm, I, I can't profess to know a shit about music, except that I like it. Uh, I can't play. My little brother got all the musical ability in our family. Um, so it says here, major six is the note C and the note A. Yeah. That's one, okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you take the note C, and the note C vibrates at 264 vibrations per second. You guys know that sound is just vibrations and... So forth and so on. Okay, and that's why whales can communicate because it vibrates through the water forever. Ooh, it goes through. Um, and A vibrates at 440 per second. What's 440 divided by 264? 1.66666. Holy shit, pretty close. Not too far away. Pretty close. So the larger thing here, we're going to get into it. If you look at Fibonacci and art, the same kind of thing happens. Things that are aesthetically pleasing to us often have Fibonacci ratio, golden ratios in them somewhere. So if I found the frequencies of sound that went into making eh, eh, their ratio would be nowhere near the golden ratio. Do you guys understand that part? You, you, I'm not saying, do you understand why I'm not saying that? Because that's a deep psych psychological question too. Holy shit. Right? So real quick, uh, so 1.6 below, uh, close to 1.618, right? Close enough, closer than three would have been. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So if I type in here, let's see if there's any more examples. If I type in here Fibonacci, either try Fibonacci music or try golden ratio music. 
some of this is kind of silly. They made music out of the Fibonacci sequence itself, and it's like, all right. Some of them are kind of silly just the way that we set up the piano. But when we set up the piano, we didn't necessarily do it according to the Fibonacci sequence. 13 notes, 13 is in there. The fifth and third notes create the basic foundations of all chords. I've got my music people in here can tell me if that's wrong or not. I don't know much about music. Basically, everything they say is true to me. I don't know. Uh, and and, and uh, while I'm thinking about it, what kind of note cards do you guys get to write notes on for tests for other teachers that make you do it on little things like that? Three by five or maybe five by eight, right? You guys kind of with me like, oh, good job. <laughs> yes, the numbers are the same. But it's, it's, uh, here's why. Here's a little reason why these kind of things are pleasing to us. Because it's how nature works. So, so you ready? All right. I, I love the rest. Uh, I, uh, getting past uh, incestuous rabbits, just for a second. Okay. I love this. this. is in your book, by the way. It's not just me bringing up incestuous rabbits. It's the book bringing that up. If you throw a couple rabbits in a room with some food, what's going to happen? Make sure the rabbits are differently sexed, right? One's a male, one's a female. Right? I used a weird phrase there, but you guys don't know how biology works. Give them some food, what's going to happen? They're going to re uh, reproduce. You with me? So there's a nice little diagram. This is actually the thought process Fibonacci went through when he created this, the reasonings behind this sequence. Uh, you'll have one pair of rabbits, and then they'll have a baby. So now there's a pair of adult rabbits and a pair of baby rabbits, right? And then the adults have another baby, so ne and then the, the babies grow up. So, and there's a better picture in the book, and so forth. And if you look at, for example, trees, I love this example because uh, if you're running around and you look at a tree, now what sucks about looking at trees is very often they've had bad things happen to them, in which case they're not going to work perfectly for this. But very often you'll see a tree, and so you go off to two branches, and you can see my beautiful artistic work, and then there's three branches in a row here, right? And then maybe this goes off, and this goes off, and this goes up. Now there's one, two, three, four, five branches. This actually does happen. Unfortunately, somebody might have cut this one off at some point, and you're like, yeah, it didn't work. Or the tree just didn't get enough nutrients, and it didn't have a little branch come out when it should have. A million things can happen. But if it's in perfect conditions and nobody touches it, very often the branches are just going to work that way. So nature, how does nature work? It builds on itself. How are we recreated? We started with a cell. That cell divided, the cell divided, so further so we grow on ourselves, right? So that's this sequence is a very silly little sequence. It's like somebody was bored. Well, one and one is two, and one and two is three. Oh, there you go. I got 30 more minutes to kill. Maybe, but no, it's, uh, it's just building on itself. So we see evidence of that kind of thing in nature. So why would it be aesthetically pleasing to us then to see that ratio in art and here in music? Because it's embedded in us. If somebody, going back to the tree, if the tree had a disease or the tree, uh, the DNA was messed up or something happened to it, it wouldn't follow those, uh, it wouldn't follow this rule. Are you guys with me? And if I saw that subconsciously, my deep rooted DNA, my biology would say, something's wrong with that tree. Stay away from it. It doesn't look good. Because something bad happened to it. Are you guys kind of with me? So it's interesting. It's an intersection of psychology, biology, and math, at least. So obviously, you're aesthetically pleasing to me if you're healthy, because we're driven by our biology. And what does biology make us want to do? What is our biological drive to reproduce? So we're always looking for healthy mates to reproduce with. And then we can extend that. We want, if I see evidence that something's healthy, I want to eat it. If it's, if it's food, if it's healthy, I want to eat it, right? So that, it's just deep in us, and it's going to seep over to things like, I like that piece of art, because, and then we say, wow, it's got the Fibonacci sequence in it. So they've actually done tests where they've shown people, you can do this with a rectangle, I think this is right, and you can make a little ratio of A plus B to A is the same thing as A to B. If this ratio to the big rectangle is the same as this ratio to the small rectangle, that's called a golden rectangle. And what they've discovered is when they showed people differently shaped rectangles or had this cut somewhere else, most people picked this cut as being the most aesthetically pleasing. 
I don't know if you guys really understand what I'm saying. And, and, and one side is like, well, duh, of course they did, because it's rooted in biology. It's something we can't escape. It's something deep within us that we have built everything else on top of. So it's always down there. But the other side is like, holy shit, that's really freaking cool. And it's embedded in music. That's so cool to me. That's something that math describes, that biology drives, is actually also something we apply to music. The music that follows, the frequencies that follow this rule are more pleasing to us. So that we have the opposite to get us up in the morning. Always useful. Uh, so I, anybody else, I, I, Fibonacci pineapple. Uh, anybody else have any interests or we, we don't have any interests. We just like to come to class and go home. Anybody else have an interest, a general interest? Movies. No? Say again? Movies. Movies? All right. Uh, this is good. Well, a lot of movies... For example, anybody ever read Da Vinci Code? No. I know they made it into a movie. I have not seen the movie. Book was better. Book, obviously, most uh, there's very few movies I would say the movie was better, but the book was definitely better. But it used the Fibonacci sequence in it. It was written like over this dead body, and it was horrible. Um, but I doubt that there would be anything describing. Mostly, they're going to probably talk about movies that have used the Fibonacci sequence in it. So here's something really weird to me. I'm not business oriented. Any of you guys majoring in business? Anybody? All right, so you all agree with me. This is good. This is not... So we all, you all are like, you love math, Jeff. I'm like, yes, I do. But now we can all agree we all don't like business. Okay, good. All right. I, I would never survive. But a friend of mine is a financial analyst. He was a financial analyst for Dell back when Dell was good. Uh, they've had some rough times. And now he's a financial analyst for American Express. He lives in London. He makes tons of money, but he's got six kids, so it all goes away. Uh, he made money during the recession because he used the Fibonacci sequence. It's something I didn't even know about until he told me, so I started researching it. Um, there's a whole, they're called Fibonacci retracements in harmonic, holy shit. So they study how often the, the stock fluctuates. They study uh, if it goes down, how long, how many, how long does it take to get back up to such and such percent? And the percentages come from ratios of the Fibonacci sequence numbers. Using that process, he actually made money through the recession on his investments. It's crazy. So this is more prevalent than I would have ever thought. At, th at first I thought, Sean, you're going to try to sell me uh, Amway stuff. I don't know what's going on. But it actually, on researching it, it's something that a lot of investors actually use, something related to this. And there's a few different approaches, but uh, if any of you are in the stock market, you might want to look into that. Right? It actually seems to work. And nobody knows why. Why would that be true? Why would the Fibonacci sequence, which has roots in nature, which hopefully you guys understand why that might make sense, because it's all about nature building on itself, and if it does, if something's wrong with it, it doesn't do that, and that's why deep within us we want to avoid that. If something's wrong with you, stay away from me, right? You guys kind of with me so far. Why would that show up in the freaking stock market? I don't know. We're human. We're driven by this. So, and the stock market is. Sort of is, it's created and run by humans, right? Human activity is what is reflected in the stock market. So on that level, maybe it makes sense, but I, I couldn't explain to you, and, and not very many people can even come close to explaining why. But they just, they just know it works. Anything that works, hell, if asking the psychic uh, at some fair work, everybody would do it. And why? I don't care. It works. Um, pineapple, I searched that just because... Uh, if you look at a pineapple and go down the throws, it's normally a, 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 an element of the Fibonacci sequence for one thing. Same thing happens in, in, in flowers. If you look at the petals and flowers, you look at the different parts of a flower. Same thing happens with um, humans. Not fave, Jeff. Face. There's face. A lot of the dimensions of humans. Blah, blah, blah. blah. There's all phi, right? Phi. Uh... Where's the general one? You guys have seen like the Da Vinci? It should show up here. There. Something's happening out there. Here we go. There's. The Truvian man. There you go. We sent that up on the Voyager. But if you actually take measurements of the human body and take ratios of those measurements, then they should come out close to the Fibonacci sequence, which actually gets into a really weird territory. If it's related to how healthy things were your environment and what you ate and all that stuff and you're supposed to get close to these measurements 
then maybe if we're attracted to people who are close to the measurements we have, or, or to the ratios, or I don't know, that gets, that gets a little weird, but these, these ratios do come out if we average a group of people together. Average ratios of measurements of their body, it'll come out to about 1.618. Now, why would people be different? Because we all, we ate differently, we had different genes, we had different environments we grew up in, all this different stuff, right? So, of course, it's not going to be perfect. Just like a tree, it had different nutrients, it had different things happen to it, it lost a branch in a big storm, right? Whatever. You guys kind of with me here? At least everybody's looking my direction. Uh, I don't know if you start to understand why I felt that, that we were only going to give like half of a part of a day to it, because people have given a lot of their time, because... The stock market alone would be enough for people to pump money into researching it. The fact that it works, they want to know why it works. If, it, if they figure out why it works, they can make things even better. They can become more efficient with it. Uh, and of course, the rest of us that don't have money in the first place, we're not going to get anything out of it, but I will. Uh, let me see what else I have up here. There's the tree thing. Let's look at some examples here. Oh yeah, I want to show you, anybody ever seen Pascal's Triangle? So there's Fibonacci coming and popping out of Pascal's triangle, right? It gets into everything a little bit. Anything to do with counting, you could find Fibonacci patterns in it very often. Because again, uh, it's related to nature building on itself. Counting builds on itself. So very often we can see that. All right. What else did I have here? Oh, here's golden. Blah, 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 blah. Everything else? Oh, well, I don't want to bore you too much with this, but I... One reason why I might be really interested in this is because that is not the only golden number there is. Uh, this is related to a rectangular shape. So what if I had a pentagon? What if I had a septagon? What if I had other shapes? Are there golden numbers related to those? Yes. So I went to a conference and somebody was talking about them. I got really interested in it and I said, are there sequences that go with those ratios from those images? And she said, I don't know. I've never thought about looking into it. So actually, I've been looking into it, and I found three of them so far. I feel really good. As a math person, you desperately are always looking to find something that nobody else has thought to look for, and I did. So it's really neat for me. I don't know, for you guys, you're like, it's good for you, Jeff. But it's really cool, and you can't see, you can't you Google, you're not going to find much. There's been like two papers that have ever been written on this stuff. So it's really cool. So I'm hoping to work with this person and actually put a paper out there, and it would be like, oh, that would be awesome. So who knows? Sorry. I just had to tell some other people about that besides, you know, my sister. Um, <laughs> my sister's not. All right. Sure, Jeff. Yeah. I got, yeah, I understand. Um, so I'll bet you anything some of you guys are really worried about the homework, but most of the homework is just verifying, for example, uh, does anybody know the standard size for a widescreen TV? What's the standard ratio when you go to set widescreen? 16 to 9, and 16 divided by 9, it's going to be like 1.7 something, but it's not too far away from 1.61, right? Uh, so stuff like that. They're going to ask you to, to measure your book, uh, to cover your book, stuff like that, right? So you're going to have to actually find a ruler to do some of this. And the rest of it's going to be mathematical. Um, what do you think I mean when I say, can you make a Fibonacci-like sequence from this? What would the next term be? 13. 13. And then 23, right? And so forth. That, you have a lot of Fibonacci-like sequences. They don't start with 1, 1, but they use the idea. And then the ratio, the really weird thing is no matter what two numbers you start, no matter what two numbers you start with, the further you go out your sequence, the ratio will be 1, 1, 6, 1, 8, no matter what two. And of course, I don't know, some of you guys might even realize you can start with 3. 1 plus 1 plus 3, 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 5, 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. They're not going to come out to 1.618, but they will come out to a different thing that's its own thing that is actually sort of related to the stuff I was talking about a second ago. So this is like, this. you could have a whole class just on this. I mean, a whole semester. You know what I mean? And you're like, dude, I could barely make it through one session. So I appreciate that. Hopefully, like three of you guys will actually look up something later on this. You should. Just Google Fibonacci, fill in the blank. Try it. Trust me. It's crazy. All right, so next time we'll get into uh, metric system. Chapter 8.